This is Hannibal from TheHannibalTV.com, and today on the line for the Great North Wrestling Podcast, we have former Canadian champion, unfortunately I have to say that, um, but I did win the title back from him, I will say that, and also the reigning and first ever Great North Wrestling world television champion and i know he's had some uh, successful title defenses lately he is the nephew of jack briscoe and the son of jerry briscoe west briscoe what's going on hannibal what's going on i'm i'm still freezing out here training in the cold when i'm running outside while well, you're lucky enough to be in the nice climate of Florida right now. Another oh, reason man, I'm like sitting you. on the beach drinking a margarita right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're relaxing because uh, you have a pretty big title defense coming up May 12th in Brockville, Ontario, and it's going to be in a mixed martial arts cage. Um, you're going to be facing the six foot six. 350-pound prodigy Nathan Banner, who you have had a match with in Great North Wrestling before, and I think, what was it, you won one fall, he won a fall, and it was ultimately ruled a, a draw or something like that? Yeah, and there's no draws when I wrestle. You know I came out with the W. But apparently the uh, Great North Wrestling Championship Committee has ruled that he had a recent victory over Scorpio and a couple other big victories. So they've ruled that he's now the number one contender for this world television title. So how are you preparing for this match inside of a cage? Well, first of all, we know that committee is all messed up right now. And you know what? I'm a fighting champion. And, you know, as the TV champion right now, I will just fit in against anybody. And if Nathan really, really earned that spot, and he's more than welcome to step in that cage with me. It's not the first time I stepped in a cage, and it won't be my last time stepping into a cage. Now, this is going to be more of a MMA-style match than you're used to. It's not going to be really your traditional uh, pro wrestling match. Do you think you'll have an advantage in this style of match with your amateur wrestling background? Yeah, definitely. Don't forget, you know, I'm a two-time state champion. I also have two different black belts and I also did boxing as an amateur so you know I'm not really scared to step in that cage put in the gloves or do whatever I have to do just to, to keep that TV championship because I'm going to do whatever it takes to walk out of that ring number one actually walk out of that cage number one two different black belts uh, may I ask what those are in uh, I did one in Muay Thai and one in uh, Taekwondo very interesting I did I was not aware yeah, of that. Four, yeah, I spent 14 years uh, doing it. And you actually won a match uh, in Rockland last year prior to winning the 25-man Battle Royal to become the world television uh, champion. But something interesting happened in that Battle Royal, and it seemed like the fans were actually cheering for you to win the Battle Royal, uh, which is very unusual. Can you explain why this might be happening all of a sudden? Well, I think the uh, the fans are showing, are finally seeing my hard work, finally seeing my passion, finally seeing that I'm not just going to let the aces and eights, I'm not just going to let Jason dictate my match. I'm going to actually go out there and give it my all, put my heart out there, put my tears out there, put my blood out there, and be the real TV champion, which I'm destined to be. And speaking of your heart, uh, there seems to be a bit of uh, more than just a managerial relationship with this Valentine. Um, what, what's going on with you guys? Is she just your manager? Or what's happening? I saw the kiss after you won the title. Oh, you know, it was just a kiss. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll keep that separate. We'll see what plays out in the future. But, you know, of course, you know, West Briscoe always kind of, kind of stays single, you know. Kind of a ladies' man, and I love the ladies. So we'll see where that goes. You know, let's just take it one step at a time, and let's just worry about Nathan right now, and worry about my love life another time. And I was reading on the internet, you were uh, you won the award for uh, Cauliflower Alley Futures Legends Award a few years ago. We're actually going to be covering the the Cauliflower Alley event this year for the Hannibal TV. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are on uh, on winning that award a couple years ago. That's a pretty big deal. You know that all, that award was actually a really big deal, and uh, I'm. 
didn't have any clue that I was actually one of. They actually told me by surprise and uh, snuck me in and said I have to watch my dad get some awards. So I went and sat at the dinner, and I was totally surprised when they uh, called my name up. And it was truly a honor and a great, just a great, great night. And I'm truly blessed to be able to get that award. And you know, it means the world to me. And hopefully, you know, I'll live up to that uh, being a future legend. Well, it looked like you were uh, going to be signed by WWE again, possibly last year. I know you had uh, a tryout at the Performance Center. They even posted some pictures of your tryout on the website. Did you ever get any feedback on on what happened with that tryout? Um, no, everything went really well. And then I had a, um, kind of like a freak accident, and I had to, uh, you know, kind of fix up my knee a little bit. So I just kind of took some uh, time off to, you know, heal up some old injuries and make sure I'm a healthy 100%. So, you know, they never gave me a no, so just waiting for that call, you know. There's a hundred people waiting in line, and hopefully, you know, I'm somewhere up on the top of that list. Is there any favorite wrestler you have right now in that company, someone that you you would like to possibly wrestle if you were to get a, a job back in WWE in the future? Randy Orton was one of the guys that I would always, you know, want to face just because I just love his style. I love how, how great he is in the ring. And then also Finn Balor is another one, and Seth Rollins. Those are, you know, some of the guys I would love to get in there with. And with your uncle being a former NWA champion and your dad being really well known as an NWA legend, what are your thoughts on uh, all this stuff happening with Billy Corgan trying to uh, get the NWA title over again and everything that's going on with that? I hope I hope it works out, and I, you know, from what I heard, he really wants to make it like the old school way, and you know, I really, uh, hope it works out. You know, I always wish every company the best because you want to see every company to succeed because that means more jobs for every wrestler. And you've had some matches for New Japan. You've traveled all over the UK. You've been in Puerto Rico. Um, I know Great North Wrestling is one of your bases now, but uh, is there any other place that you've been wrestling on a regular basis? Um, all over the place, man. I can't keep track. I mean, I'm in Detroit next week, and then from Detroit, I fly straight to Colorado. Um, just, I'm pretty much all over the place. You know, I love I love going to different cities, and I love getting to show the fans. You know what I'm capable of doing. And, you know, especially I love Canada, you know. Great North Wrestling is, you know, definitely the spot to be. And I love all the fans out there. And I love, you know, the appreciation that they're showing me. And hopefully, you know, I can keep being their TV champion and representing them in a good way. And you're very well known for your time in TNA. They gave you a big push there with the Aces and Eights. It's now known as Impact Wrestling. They've done some tapings in Canada recently that I was on, but they're also back recording in Orlando um, with this new management here and this kind of non-exclusive contracts that they're doing. Would you be interested in the future of uh, working for them again in some capacity? Man, um, anybody that pays me, I'll step in that ring again. So I don't, you know, don't really matter what company it is. As long as the money's good, you know, I'm down. Is there any type of training you're doing uh, specifically to uh, to fight this Nathan Banner who's I know you've had matches with me and some bigger guys but this guy is this guy weighs a lot 350 pounds he's a big boy so uh. yeah I've just been powerlifting amateur wrestling and boxing trying to box as much as I can and uh, getting that cardio up because even though he's six foot six 300 pounds I feel like I can uh, out cardio him and out move him in the ring uh, where can fans follow you on social media that are listening to this? Um, they can follow me at uh, West Briscoe 19 on Instagram. And then they can also follow me on Twitter at West Briscoe, the one with the blue check. And what's your message for Nathan Banner? I know he's going to be listening to this. You know what, Nathan? You know, we've had those struggles before. Apparently, you've had one up on me. i got one up on you. And I know right now you're the number one contender. And, uh, Hopefully you're training, because I'm training. Even though I'm sitting on the beach right now drinking a pina colada, looking at these girls walk by, I'm thinking about you, man. Me and you, it's going down. So get ready. Can't wait to see you in that cage, buddy.
And all I can say is you're lucky that I have to fight Haku on this show. And then I got to get revenge on Quebec or Pierre. But after I'm done settling those disputes, if you somehow manage to slip by banner, I'll be going after that title. You know what, Hannibal? Bring it. You know, I always, you know, we've had our, uh, our really tough feuds before, but you know what? You're always someone that I do truly respect. And you know what? If I make it past banner, which I will, you know, come on up. 